Hello everyone, OC here aka Icon7 and today I will give my advice on how to counter every single killer from Trapper all the way to Singularity. Now I have like 11,000 hours in this game so I've been through it all, I've seen it all and I'm going to give you my advice on how I personally play against certain killers. I made many guides from how to loop 360s, moonwalking, check spots, how to loop shack, how to loop jungle gyms, how to loop TL, how to loop efficient, when to drop a pallet, sensitivity settings on controller, all of that stuff. But I still haven't made a video on how to counter every single killer. So yeah, I don't want to keep this intro too long. Let's get straight into it. Trapper during early game is weak. Now Trapper in the beginning of the game will always try to find and set up traps. In that time frame, it is important for survivors to do gens. When one of your teammates is getting chased, what you can also do, and this is also very popular with Hag, you chase the Trapper and disarm the traps while the two other survivors are on gens and one of your teammates is getting chased. This also works early game if one of your teammates sees Trapper, um, this one teammate follows Trapper around early game and all the traps that Trapper sets, this one teammate can just disarm and so leaving no trouble mid game or early game for your teammates. What you can also do is if a window is trapped or a pallet is trapped, you can actually vault it if your other teammate is disarming it because they are locked in animation and it won't get you trapped. A lot of trappers love to trap strong loops. Well, obviously because it's trapper and you know, it's a basic M1 killer so they need to trap strong loops and before they get looped forever. So checking loops such as cow tree, shack, jungle gyms, like long walls or short walls, especially in the tall grass near the loops is really important. Sometimes a trapper can misplace a trap and if this ever happens, you can actually loop around it. But I mean, most good trappers know how to put a trap in a pallet, of course. Sometimes a trapper will fake putting a trap in a loop so you can run away. So let's say you're looping at shack. They will like fake trapping the pallet just so you can run away and then they will just chase you. So be aware of that. It's also really important to know where the basement is so you can prevent looping in that area because trapper basement can be really rough. Wraith. If you're working on a gen, it's important to look around you to see where a wraith is coming from. Doing a gen in the open is pretty dangerous because once a wraith approaches you and starts to uncloak and you have nothing to play around with like a pallet or a window, you will most likely get hit. Stunning a wraith while they uncloak, the stun will last a lot longer than just a regular stun. Sometimes a wraith will fake going out of his invincibility just so you can drop the pallet and then they can just break it. So stay patient, wait it out, wait till you truly see that the wraith is uncloaking and that's where you drop a pallet. Not many survivors know about this one, but if you are getting chased by a wraith, you can actually repeatedly vault a window while they are uncloaked because a window won't get blocked when a wraith is invincible because you aren't in chase. This trick is a lot used in competitive because you won't allow the wraith to vault the window or break the pallet. So you are forcing them to get out of invincibility to break the pallet or vault the window. If you're playing against a hillbilly, being in the open is really dangerous because obviously Billy has insta down potential. You always need to make sure you have a pallet or a window around you so you can play around it and force the Billy to use his hammer, so M1. Most Billies also like to fake breaking a pallet. Now if you drop a pallet, sometimes you will see hillbilly revving their chainsaw. Do not run away immediately. Sometimes they are baiting it and then they can just catch you again. So always make sure they break the pallet and then you run away. Same thing as when you're greeting pallets, they can like fake revving their chainsaw just to get close and insta down you. Short filler pallets can be a death trap. Most good billies know how to flick, especially car loops that have little to no collision. Most good billies know how to flick around it. Now to counter a billy flicking around these loops is to like move away from the loop if they're doing so. You can try to connect loops if that happens as well. Nurse. The edge of the map is the best place to run a nurse. And that is for multiple reasons. Nurse cannot blink through the edge map walls, especially in maps such as Suffocation Pit or Azarov's resting place. There is a lot of rocks, trees, Z walls that you can play around with on the edge of the map, which in fact is really effective against the nurse. It is also far away from everything on the map. So even if you do go down on the edge, 
edge map, it would take her a lot more time to get you on a hook, as well as the chances of dealing with slugging or pain rest is a lot more lower. To sum things up, whether you're getting chased on the edge of the map or the mid map, be unpredictable because that is the biggest counterplay to nurse you always need to make sure you mix up your movement as well as losing line of sight of course if you're playing against a huntress a lot of huntresses love to wind up their hatchets near windows or pallets so if you're looping a pallet and you're greeting it and you're thinking that the huntress is winding up you can always pallet vacuum to confirm a stun of course, losing line of sight is also really effective against Huntress as well as Deathslinger, but I'm going to mention that later in the video as well. If you play against a Huntress that is not patient, you can fake windows very easily. You can also fake windows and pallets by crouching. A lot of filler pallets have a high structure and a low structure. When you're playing against a Huntress, it is important to loop the high structure to prevent her from hitting you over the loop. Be careful with that because there is also a lot of cracks in between the high structures that a huntress can throw her hatches through. Same thing with the pallet gyms, it is way more effective to loop the short side. This is way more safe than looping the long side. On the longer side, you have a way higher chance of getting mind gamed or getting hit by a hatchet. On the short side, however, you can see where the Huntress is coming from, you can see when they're double backing, where you can see that they're moonwalking, and they wouldn't even have time to wind up their hatchet and actually hit you on the pallet. Prevent being in the open against the Huntress. If they do hit you with a hatchet in the open, do not spin around them because you lose a lot of distance, and if you get hit with a hatchet, a Huntress recovers way quicker, so if you get hit with a hatchet, hold W and try to make it to the nearest pallet window or loop. Just like Trapper prevent the basement. Huntress, her basement game is insane. If she does get a hook in the basement and someone tries to save and she hits that person with a hatchet near the stairs, that person won't even be able to get the save. Same thing when you're trying to unhook even though it's not in the basement. If she's winding up her hatchet and she's camping with her hatchet, it is always better to go with two people for the save. Playing against a Myers, it is really important to stay very aware because Myers in tier 1 does not have any terror radius. You can still hear him breathe, but there is no heartbeat. Losing line of sight against a Myers is really good because obviously you prevent them from gaining stock. And when the Myers can't stock, they won't be able to get their one shot power. If you are a few minutes into the game and the Myers is tier 2, that's where you have to start being a little bit more careful with your looping because they may have stalked your teammates already and they could be really close to reaching tier 3. And when a Myers is tier 3, everybody gets exposed. There is also an add-on for Myers which is called Tombstone and with that add-on they can Mori survivors when they reach tier 3. If you want to tell if Myers has Tombstone or not, so when you're getting chased by a Myers and their hand is open, that's where you you know they have a mori and they're trying to get close to you and mori you if their hand is a fist that means that they do not have a mori and it's just one shot however if they are approaching with tombstone and you don't have a nearby locker you can jump in you can counter it by jumping into lockers by the way but let's say there is no locker nearby you can also touch a generator if there is no gen nearby you can touch a chest or a totem anything that makes you interact with an object Hag. So just like Trapper, early game for Hag is really weak. So they will most likely set up traps around the map. So if you have one survivor following Hag early game to disarm all the traps, that is really effective. Now back in the day when flashlights were still affecting her traps, that was really nice, but you can still do it when a teammate is following Hag around to break the traps. This can also happen in a chase. If Hag is chasing someone and placing traps, that one teammate can keep disarming the traps. Of course, there could also be traps in jungle gyms, shack, cow tree, very strong loops, as well as filler pallets. There could be traps everywhere because Hag has 10 traps that she can set up and it's also a lot faster than Trapper. Trapper needs to go find his traps, set up traps. Hag already starts with 10 traps. When a teammate is hooks, there will most likely be a trap underneath the hook. So when you're trying to save, make sure you're crouching, disarm the trap and then unhook. When you do pop a trap near a pallet or a window, do not panic because sometimes Hag loves to bait it and they won't actually teleport. So they're just waiting for you to like vault back and 
and get it down. And just like Trapper and Huntress, of course, if you're injured, prevent looping near the basement or at least try to play a lot more safe around it. Because once they have a hook in the basement, it makes it a lot harder to save and they could pretty much end the game from there, depending on how many gens are left. Playing against a doctor, a lot of piles, especially filler pallets, become anti-loop. To counter that is to pre-drop filler pallets. If you pre-drop filler pallets, the pallet becomes a lot more safe. Now, if you're playing against a good doctor and you don't drop a filler pallet, they will keep shocking you until they get closer and get a hit. Now, you can also connect loops, but if there is nothing around you, then the best thing you can do is to pre-drop it. This doesn't apply to jungle gyms. However, in jungle gyms, you can always loop it a little bit more different. Now, usually doctors love to shock windows and pallets. Try to like play around the jungle gym and make Make it so you don't make it too obvious that you're going to the window or pallet. You can also like move away from his shock as an example shown here and then drop the pallet. If your teammate is downed and they are under a pallet but you're trying to save them but you're injured, I wouldn't get too close because a lot of doctors use static blast and when they do so they know the location of every other survivor around them. You can counter the static blast by jumping in a locker or just being outside of the terror rages of course. If you are standing on the hatch and the doctor shocks you, you can actually not jump inside of the hatch. So next time you are on the hatch and the doctor is approaching you, don't let them get too close and shock you, otherwise they can just close the hatch. Booba is also pretty similar to Hillbilly, except they don't really have the same map travel speed. So greeting pallets when they are too close is not the best thing you can do against the Booba. You can also stun them when they are chainsawing when you time it perfectly. If you find yourself in a dead zone, there is no pallet, no window, the Booba is using his chainsaw, Try to make use out of trees, rocks. You can always play around those and sometimes the booba might even bump into it. If a booba bumps into an object, they go into tantrum. Now, if you touch the chainsaw or get close to a booba into tantrum, you will still get insta downed. That's the same thing if you jump into a locker and the booba bumps into a locker to go into tantrum. Do not immediately jump out of the locker because you will get downed. There is a specific timing and the best video that shows when to jump out of a locker is one made by Odzdava. I will leave the link in the description as well as in the pinned comment, but it's really, really helpful. If you play against a Freddy, Freddy has a passive phasing from a certain distance. However, if you do get closer, they don't have that passive phasing anymore. Now that is only if you're not in the dream world. If you are in the dream world, there is no terror radius and you are completely oblivious. However, in the dream world, they do not have any passive phasing. In the dream world, you get affected by dream pallets or snares, but you do not get affected by that if you're not in the dream world. If you suddenly see two two pallets next to each other that is pretty unusual, then you know that the Freddy has fake pallets. Freddy's also like to fake teleport so they can push you away from the gens. Sometimes it is effective for them if they have perks like Deadman Switch. Now how do you counter Freddy in a chase? If you are in the dream world, then you do get affected by snares or fake pallets. Fake pallets are just like you hear it, fake pallets and snares, they do slow you down a lot, especially if you are in loops like filler pallets. A Freddy can catch up really fast if you step on those snares. In bigger loops, you can have a teammate stepping on the snares for you, so you can just keep looping without being affected by it, especially if you're injured or dead on the hook and the Freddy is putting a lot of snares in your loop. A teammate can always take away the snares while you continue looping, or they can also take a hit, of course. If you are in a unsafe loop and Freddy is setting up snares, that's your time to connect loops because while a Freddy is setting up snares, they do get slowed down a little bit so that you can take as your advantage to run to another loop. When you're playing against a pig and you're getting chased, so you hear the heartbeat, but then the heartbeat suddenly disappears, that could be that they're crouching nearby. Also, when you're looping a pig in a short loop, they might crouch and use their dash, their power, to might hit you. Sometimes in those same short loops, they will crouch just for you to run away and then they will follow you again. So be a little bit aware of that. Also, when you do have a trap on, it's always better to leave the gens 99 and then pop them. Now, that's not always the case. If it's only one survivor who has the trap on, you might as well pop it. But if there's like three survivors who have a trap on, it's always better to 99 the gents and then like check one or two boxes first 
and then pop the gens. But apart from that, there is not much counterplay you can do against a pig. When you're playing against a clown, it's pretty similar to a doctor. When you approach a short feather palette or short loop, it's way better to just pre-drop the palette. If you don't pre-drop the palette and you're playing against a good or even decent clown, you will most likely not even get a single loop out of it. That doesn't apply to Shaq, Kautri, or bigger filler palettes, bigger loops. It's mainly just the unsafe feather palettes. You can also kind of bait clown into throwing bottles. Now, most of the time, if you're getting chased and you're running towards a loop, before reaching that loop, clown is already like preparing his bottles and throwing bottles in that certain loop. What you can do is approach a loop, make clown throw bottles on that certain loop. You can say it's like connecting loops, which is also good against a clown if you have like a good amount of distance. Also try to count the bottles that they're throwing so you know how much they have left and when they have to reload. You can connect loops, but if the loops are too far separated from each other, it's a little bit too risky. Most of them have really good tracking. Now, whether you are injured or not, they will track you down. Now, a spirit can hear you breathe, they can see your scratch marks, or they can hear your grunts of pain. But as survivors, we can also hear which direction spirit is phasing from. Now, if you're getting chased, of course, and you're not injured, the best thing what you can do if a spirit is phasing towards you is walk, crouch. Crouching also reduces your sound by 25% in case some people didn't know that. If you're injured, try to make it to the nearest pallet or window because as I said, as survivors, we can hear which direction the spirit is phasing from. Now, if you're standing in between a pallet and you're listening which direction the spirit is coming from, you can easily get a stun or drop the pallet from the correct side. There is a pretty insane trick that I've honestly never seen in public matches, ever. And I'm 99% sure that whoever's watching this now probably didn't even see that either. I've seen it in competitive matches, but that is if you're injured, you can drop a pallet, have a teammate body block you from the other side. And at that point, spirit can't down you. They can't down you. They can either break the pallet from the other side or they will hit your teammate. Now that is really good if you're dead on hook or you're getting tunneled. You can like run towards a pallet, drop it, have one, have one teammate body block for you. Now, if you're playing against a Legion, Legion always wants to get information, especially early game, so they will use their power. The best way to counter Legion is to split up. We all know if you're all together as survivors and the Legion uses Frenzy, they can get everyone injured as well as a person downed. So splitting up is the most effective way. If you're getting chased, try to make sure you're getting chased far away from your teammates or from the gens that are being worked on. Let's say you and your friend are working on a gen, right? And the Legion is hitting you with Frenzy you can actually prevent your friend being hit by Frenzy by trying to body block for your teammate. Now, if Legion hits me with Frenzy and they are going after my friend, I can try and body block Legion so they can hit me twice with Frenzy because if this ever happens, the Legion will get cancelled out of his power. Same thing as Huntress, Pallet vacuuming is pretty good against the Legion. If they're using Frenzy, a lot of Legions love respecting Pallet. So pretending that you're going to loop the Pallet, but then actually getting the stun is really, really good. If you're playing against a Plague and she infects you, do not cleanse. I don't know why people cleanse. I see so many in solo queue, so many survivors cleanse. Why? You just give her power. If you cleanse, you're buffing the plague. I know there's a lot of survivors who don't like playing injured, but trust me, playing injured is way better than giving plague power and making her one of the strongest killers in the game. However, if you're dead on hook and you're infected, you're allowed to cleanse, but try to cleanse far away from the gens that still have to be worked on. Try to cleanse on the side where the gens are already done. That's the same thing that applies that if you finish all the gens, then you can cleanse, but try to cleanse far away from the exit gates. You can also counter plague vomiting on you by crouching. This is something I always do and that saved me in so many situations. This is so effective and I love it so much. Plague loves to puke on generators, pallets and all that stuff so they can get like survivors infected as soon as possible. But what you can do, especially when you play with friends or in a team, you can wait out corrupt. I mean, the puke on the gen and then work on it. I guess you can play it like comp style-ish, but I mean, it's something, you know.
When you're playing against a ghost face, it's pretty similar like the pig. If you're getting chased and all of a sudden the heartbeat disappears, that could be that they went into stalk mode. So if their terror radius suddenly disappears, that means that they're using their power. His stalk range is further away than his reveal range, so don't stand in the open or heal under the hook if you don't know where he is. In certain filler pals, a ghost face will crouch mid chase just so they can like mind game you and catch you off guard. Sometimes even when you're injured, a ghost face will go into stalk mode in a chase just so they can hide their terror radius and red stain to mind game you easier. Also, if you feel like you are 99% stalked and you are on the verge of being exposed, you can like force an M1 hit, especially when your teammate is getting chased and you can body block for them because once a ghost face hits you, your expose meter resets or demo dog or demo puppy. So if you're getting chased by demo, tiles such as Shaq do not really become just as safe. Now, usually when you play against killers such as Trapper, Pig, Plague, Shaq is a pretty strong tile. If you play against killers like Demogorgon as well as Wesker, which is what I'm going to mention later on, of course, um, Shaq doesn't really become one of the safest tiles at all. There is a lot of ways on how to counter Demogorgon. Now, a lot of filler palettes have a straight side and have a more of a round side. It's always important to loop the side that is more round-ish than the straight side to prevent a demo from dashing at you. They will also place portals around the map so they can travel the map easier. If you are standing in one of those portals, let's say a portal is near a gen and you are working on a gen, uh, you do get oblivious because you are close to the portal. If a demo gorgon comes out of a portal, they do not have any terror radius for a few seconds. So when you are cleansing those portals, be aware because you are oblivious. Just like Hillbilly, you can also crouch stack demo gorgon at Shaq which I will leave a link in the pinned comment as well. The way how a crouch stack works is because of the level change. And I'm just going to leave a video link in the pinned comment as well. So you can see how it really works. Oni. Now I do have a video on how to completely destroy a Oni. But of course that was when I was playing with friends. So what we did is we pre-dropped pallets what you should do against an Oni, you should never greet pallets against an Oni unless it's like a jungle gym and you can go around it a few times, that's fine. If you're in a filler pallet, unsafe pallet, pre-dropping is the key. So the way on how to play against Oni is you pre-drop while your teammates do gens and that is literally the only counterplay you do against Oni because once Oni gets a hit on the survivor or once he has power, he becomes one of the strongest killers in the game. So if he doesn't have that, if he doesn't have a single hit on survivors, Oni becomes even worse than Trapper because even Trapper has traps and Oni doesn't have anything. It is insane. So how do you play against Oni? You pre-drop pallets, you make sure you don't greed unsafe pallets to not get hit, um, especially early in the game. If you get hit early in the game, it can get really rough mid and late game. I don't even know if you're gonna reach late game then. So I will leave the game link against that Oni in the pinned comment so you can check it out and see how you truly play against a Oni. Because that video counts for solo queue survivors as well. Deathslinger, pretty similar like Huntress, you make sure you lose line of sight. Losing line of sight against a Huntress and Deathslinger is really, really effective. Also, just like Huntress, prevent looping um, tiles that have a low structure because they can just hit you over it. Also, if you are looping them on tiles that have a high structure, there is still a lot of holes where a slinger can shoot from. That can apply to many tiles since many tiles have like holes in them. Once again, if you're looping pallets such as a pallet gym, it's way better to loop the short side just like I mentioned against the Huntress. Pre-dropping when you're injured is pretty good as well. Let's say you have a filler pallet and you pre-drop that pallet and the slinger shoots you. Well, there is almost no way a slinger can down you because you are on the other side of the pallet. However, there are a few pallets where a slinger can actually still hit you from. And that is mostly on the unsafe pallet. So you need to be aware of that. Survivors can also body block for you if you got hit by the harpoon. Overall, the playstyle is pretty similar to Huntress. Pyramid Head is a killer that can ignore pallets in a certain way. Not completely, of course. You can still counter him by pre-dropping pallets. But of course, pre-dropping is not always the option. So here's an example on how you can kind of like play around it. There is many ways on how to counter a Pyramid Head power because they can fake it. They can actually go for it. So sometimes you can like stand still on the pallet for a few seconds and then move away again. Sometimes you can like run 
inside of the pallet when they are winding up their power and then like moving away from the pallet again just last second so yeah you can counter it like by standing still in the pallet when they are charging by going in the pallet moving away last second by pre-dropping there is many ways and i can honestly like just show you examples on how it is because after all a pyramid head is a 50 50 killer because you will find situations where if you drop a pallet and you are in a corner of a map um that's where a pyramid head is just going to repeatedly use their power to get a hit and that's pretty much 50 50 that's a guessing game at that point so yeah it's like there are counter plays but some of them are 50 50 of course prevent walking or running inside a trail of torment because you will get tormented and if this ever happens if you get downed later in the game while you are tormented the killer will put you in a cage now you can counter being tormented by saving someone else who was caged now let's say i'm tormented and i go to save someone else who was in a cage my torment will go away blight is arguably one of the most fun killers to play against and how to counter blight the moment you see blight bouncing his head on a structure that's where you know they're about to go for a rush on their first rush, here is an example, sometimes you can block their first rush, depending on what direction they are rushing at. You can also crouch stack a Blight, just like Demogorgon and Hillbilly, especially at Shack, but it also works on the stairs. At Shack it works at the door, as well as at the window in Auto Haven. If you want to see more examples on the crouch stack, I will leave the link in the pinned comment. In a lot of straight loops, such as pallet gyms or like filler pallets with a straight side, a lot of blights love to go for hug tags. So if you're looping them on a straight filler pallet, such as um, the boxes in Macmillan, I mean, they usually have two sides. They have the round side and they have the straight side. Obviously, you always want to loop the round side. But let's say you find yourself on the straight side. If they do bump on the loop, the best thing what you can do, especially if they are really good in hug tagging, is to just connect loops and leave that loop. Also prevent being in the open too much, try to use every obstacle in front of you such as trees, rocks, try to lose line of sight, take tight corners, all that kind of stuff to make it a lot harder for a blight to hit you while rushing. If you're playing against a decent blight, like a decent mid blight, not a super good blight, you can actually 360 them when they are rushing. I guess it is helpful if you're in the open and there is nothing else you can play around with. But overall, Blight is a really fun killer to play against. And to me, one of my most favorite alongside Wesker, which I'm going to cover up later in this video as well. If you play against twins and Charlotte uses Victor and you're carrying Victor on your back. Let's say you got hit, you got Victor on your back. What you can do to save time for your teammates is to keep holding victor now keep in mind that if you have victor on your back that you are oblivious and you do not hear the killer's heartbeat now holding victor on your back is really good especially if all of your teammates are injured because this is twins once everyone is injured why would she keep using charlotte twins players are very known for slugging and once they have everybody injured that is why I keep saying you can play against twins like you play against Oni. Because with Oni, once you have people injured, you have your power and you become stronger. Same thing with twins. If everybody is injured, you only have to control Victor. You can keep controlling Victor every single time. If people kick Victor, well, you get Victor back in 5 seconds. And so on, you can keep going with that. Now, if you're carrying Victor and all of your teammates are injured, that is actually the most effective play. What you can also do, and I see this a lot in competitive as well, if you're injured and Charlotte is using uh, Victor, now if you're running away from Victor, what you can do is jump in a locker and let's say the locker is not too far away from Charlotte, what you can do is instead of having a teammate body block for you, um, what you can do is jump in a locker and your teammate can body block the locker because obviously it is hard to body block um, Victor in a chase so what you can do is jump in a locker and having a teammate body blocking the locker but of course if the locker is really far away whether you are injured or healthy you will be able to get out of the locker before Charlotte gets there against Trickster what you need to do prevent being in the open and try to only loop loops or filler pallets that have high walls high structures because we all know how insane trickster is when you in the open once you're in the open against the trickster you will go down even if you are in straight long loops sometimes trickster will still have a lot of value 
from his knives. Going for a Pallet Vacuum against the Trickster is pretty good as well, because they do play a little bit like Huntress, where they are afraid of Pallets. Like, you run through a Pallet, they like respect it and then like throwing knives. So what you can do is like pretend you're looping the Pallet and then stun them, like you do against a Huntress or a Legion when they go into Frenzy, or sometimes even Pyramid Head. Also stay away from the basement because Booba, Trickster, Huntress or Hag are absolutely insane in the basement. Nemesis tries to like get his power by getting a lot of tentacle hits. So he gets his tier 2 and tier 3 by hitting survivors with his tentacle. Obviously he can also kill his own zombies but I mean it's faster if they hit survivors. So when you're looping a jungle gym or any other tile you can expect a nemesis to respect a pallet to go for a tentacle hit. So never drop a pallet instantly especially if you're getting chased for the first time against the nemesis in that game. I see a lot of people still dropping a pallet and then crouching behind the pallet thinking they won't get hit with the tentacle but they change that. Now you can actually get hit even though you're crouching on the other side of the pallet. However, if you vault a window or you're on the other side of a obstacle, let's say a filler pallet like boxes and Macmillan, you won't get hit if you crouch. Somehow, even when I'm looping Nemesis, there always is a zombie in a loop and all you can do to be honest is leave the loop and try to like connect loops or loop another tile because if you get hit by a zombie and you are not infected you become infected and if you are already infected and you get hit by a zombie you become injured and if you're injured and you still get hit by a zombie while you are infected well then you go down so how do you really counter nemesis prevent looping loops with short structure pretty much same thing as death slinger and huntress and trickster because they can hit you over it if you don't crouch properly with their power. Once Nemesis reaches tier 2, they can actually break the pallet with their tentacle. Also, you can kill zombies with a pallet, which is usually not worth it, and I wouldn't really do it early game, except if it's like a gen that has to get done and there is a zombie around it, then yeah, there is no worries getting rid of that pallet to kill that zombie and finish that important gen. Pinhead. Now, Pinhead will usually try and hit the chain so they can slow you down and hit you a lot easier or catch up a lot easier. Now, if you see the Pinhead going for their power, try to be as unpredictable as possible. I noticed that a lot of Pinheads use the power a lot when a survivor is approaching a pallet, so you can always be super unpredictable. If you're on console and you play on controller, I would recommend you to change your keybinds because if you don't, removing chains and dropping pallets is the same keybind. I used to be there, I had the same problem, I switched my keybinds and everything is perfect now. There is also a box that will spawn on the map that you will have to go and get and like solve, otherwise the chain hunt will start. However, I would not recommend you to go for the box if you're already injured, unless you're really good in looping. The reason why I'm saying this is because if they do teleport to you and you have the box and they down you because you are injured, the chain hunt will start and you will have to fix the box all over again. You can also remove the chains with the objectives around you, for example, like trees or like rocks or like uh, tiles. Your teammates can also remove your chains. Now, let's say you're getting chased, you're injured, the pinhead hits you with a chain and there is a teammate nearby. They can just walk through the chains and the chains will break as well. So yeah, they will also go for the chain when you're looping like filler pallets with low structure. That will also happen. But like I said, be completely unpredictable. Then we have our first killer where holding W became a popular thing and that is the artist. Now if artist puts a bird in a pallet all you can pretty much do is connect loops and going for the next loop because if you're staying near that loop you will most likely get hit. However what you can also do is if you're knowing you're playing against an artist if you're getting chased uh, against artist and you're playing with friends or just really good solo queue teammates what a survivor can do is they can take the bird away now let's say i'm getting chased in a feather pallet the artist puts a bird my teammate just takes away the bird and runs away while i continue looping the artist now this teammate can do that multiple times so even if you have birds on you you can still take away another bird and so on so pretty much like i mentioned against hag and trapper where a teammate follows the killer and disarms all the traps that's something you can do with artist as well also when you're working on a gen sometimes you can like throw birds at you from across the map 
but sometimes you can see them coming and you can just like dodge it even though you're still on the gen you can like dodge it and then go back on the gen you can also remove birds by going into a locker and that is also like really good let's say you're working on a gen in a jungle gym and there is a locker next to you you can just jump into a locker if you get hit with the birds there was a time where you can use them with flashlights but they nerfed that so you can't do that anymore but the whole chase scenario is pretty much hold w unless you have a teammate that can take away the bird so with artist if there is a wall in between you and she's shooting a bird at you you won't get injured you will just have the birds on you as well as if you are really far away and even though you're in the open and there is no wall in front of you if she shoots a bird you won't get injured there is only a certain distance that has to be between you and the bird where she can actually injure you but however if there is a wall in front of it she can't injure you now let's say you drop a pallet and there is a bird on the other side of the pallet she can injure you with that bird because there is nothing protecting you a pallet is not covering the bird i still wanted to mention that in case people are confused about it i still wanted to mention that because some people might be confused about it onrio now the way how i play against onrio especially when i play with friends we ignore tapes we gen rush and we get out now of course i'm making a guide so not everyone plays in swift let's say you're getting chased by a onrio it's good to know where the dvs are because sometimes in chase onrio does teleport and try to catch you from another side try to catch you off guard also what you have to remember is when you're looping a onrio and she is in manifest mode she cannot hit you so unless she gets out of it that's where she can start swinging because i see a lot of people dropping pallets when a onrio is in manifest mode there is no need to panic she can't hit you in manifest mode. Also, body blocking against an Onryo when she's in manifest mode is not the best idea because she can just walk through the person who's trying to body block and then hit you. So also, when she's in manifest mode, she has no red stain. Pretty much a little bit like Wraith where she's invincible, but she can't really hit you or anything. So what you can also do is walk through her sometimes in that short period of time when she's in manifest. Then, of course, she needs to de-manifest to be able to hit survivors again. Pretty similar like a Wraith uncloaking to hit survivors again. Dredge, which once again brings us back to the whole W. Not super much as artist, but it's very, very similar. Because when you're looping a filler palette or just a regular palette, what a Dredge can do is they can put their power, their shadow near that loop. And when you are looping the Dredge and you reach the other side, they can TP to that shadow and hit you from there and that's where basically it becomes a 50 50 so when you see a dredge putting their shadow that's where you leave the loop and try to connect other loops however you can counter that shadow but that is if a teammate walks into it to remove it a lot of people don't know about this but you can remove dredge his shadow if you walk into it now you can do it yourself as well while you're chased but it's very very hard since they will most likely teleport also pretty similar to onrio when you're looping a dredge they can tp to lockers to cut you off same thing with freddy if you're looping a freddy and you're heading towards a loop or there is a gen they can sometimes teleport there and cut you off from there but with freddy it's a lot more obvious um with dredge if you find two lockers next to each other do not close two lockers only close one locker because let's say you are working on a gen at shack and one locker is closed um, if Dredge decides to TP to you, they will automatically only TP to the locker that is closed. So there is no need to close two lockers. Wesker, my most fun killer to play against. He's so similar to Demogorgon, but just way more fun. Now, how do you counter Wesker? Now, pretty much similar to Demogorgon, straight loops are very dangerous against a Wesker. Even more dangerous than a Demogorgon. If you're looping Shaq against a Wesker and you're like looping the outside, even the inside there is a high chance you will get hit by his power if you're playing against a good wesker you can juke his power if you see that they're dashing you can like move away be unpredictable same thing a bit how you do against demogorgon however you cannot crouch stack a wesker you can crouch stack a demogorgon but not wesker there's a lot of techs you can do with wesker you can even hog tack with wesker too so loops that are short straight are pretty dangerous against a Wesker. Even though you don't know how to hug tag, you can still hit a survivor if you know how to dash on a stray tile. To prevent this, try to loop tiles that are a little bit more round-ish or have like a weird structure. It's way better than looping a stray 
tile, especially when you loop like pallet gems or just a long straight tiles. If you greet pallets like those, you will most likely get hit by his power. Now, just like Dimogorgon, Booba, Billy or Blight, when they are rushing or dashing or when Booba is using his chainsaw and rushing towards you or Billy using his chainsaw and rushing towards you, you can stun them mid rush, mid dash or whatever if you time it perfectly. Same thing with Wesker when he's using his power, you can stun him mid dash. You can vote a pallet instantly back if a Wesker is voting it with his power. Now let's say you're getting chased, you drop the pallet, Wesker votes it with his power, you can vote the pallet back before Wesker can even hit you. Also if you're fully infected you're 8% slower. You will notice a red circle around your character that means that if Wesker uses his power on you you will automatically go into the dying state. The knight. Oh boy. The knight. Yes. The counterplay tonight, and I've said this multiple times on streams, is holding W because once you reach a loop, they put a guard and they let AI do all the work for them. They are literally letting the bots do all work for them. And the best way on how to counter it is by connecting loops. However, if you are playing with friends or you have teammates that know how to counter a knight, what you can do is if someone is getting chased by a knight, and that is probably the most effective way on how you play against knight, and that is by letting a teammate follow the killer. And let's say you're getting chased by the knight. Uh, if your friend is following the killer, if he places a guard, your friend takes away the guard and goes away while you continue looping the knight. Now, if you have a perk dead hard and you're injured and the killer is putting a guard, you can also dead hard the guard and take distance. Yes, you can also take the flag, but let's say you're getting dead zoned, you're in a corner of a map, the killer puts a guard, you absolutely have nowhere else to run. Knight, in my opinion, is poorly designed and I will never ever enjoy playing against a knight. Knight and Skull Merchant, in my opinion, are just so poorly designed. Most Skull Merchant that I play against are literally defending a 3 gen at 5 gens. But yeah, how do you counter Skull Merchant? I guess in chase, if they're putting a drone, run away from the drone. Hold W, that's all I can say. If you stay in the drone in a loop, uh, she gets haste, she gets 5% faster, so it's a lot more dangerous for you. You also get exposed if you're staying in a drone. So the best thing what you can do is connect loops against a skull merchant. If you have a cloud trap on after disarming a drone, that means that if you drop a pallet and you vault it, the pallet breaks. So that is something you have to be aware of in a chase. I had games where I played with friends where it took like 27 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and we won. And that is just because we were playing in a swift. I could not imagine playing solo queue against it. No, thanks. Singularity, do not waste EMPs immediately. If you have a biopod on your back, try to see if there is any other survivors who also have biopods on their back or try to look around you if there is any biopods hanging on the walls so you can remove yours as well as the biopods on the walls or on your teammates. You can hold an EMP and if you see a teammate getting chased you can get closer and follow them with an EMP and remove their biopod or the biopods hanging around them. In chase if you have a biopod on your back and Singularity is chasing you and he's shooting a ball at your back towards the biopod, they will instantly TP towards you. If that happens, they gain a endurance effect and they can vault windows faster, break pallets faster, and they have base kit spirit fury basically. What a lot of singularities do is if you're getting chased and you reach a pallet, they will try to teleport to you the moment you reach the pallet, so they force you to drop the pallet. If you do force to drop the pallet, they won't get affected by the stun. So how do you really play against singularity? Pre-dropping is a must. If you're getting chased by Singularity and you have a biopod on your back, you have to know that they will try and teleport to you to get closer and get a free hit. Pre-dropping is really good. If they do teleport to you in chase and they are pretty far away from the pallet, do pre-drop the pallet. Because if you do stun them with the pallet, like I said before, they have base kit, spirit fury, enduring. So it's, you know, better to pre-drop the pallet. Same thing in a chase when you're vaulting a window. If they teleport to you, they can vault the window a lot faster so be aware of that sometimes it's also just nice to look around you to see if there is any biopods and see where they might shoot from singularity is fairly new and also pretty rare so this is all i can come up with when it comes to like countering and in chase 
And yeah, that's that. How to counter every single killer and dead by daylight. I always wanted to make a video like this. Of course, I didn't go too, too much in detail talking about like perks and stuff because otherwise this video would be like hours long and I'm not on Zdava, you know? But yeah, if you did reach that far, I really enjoyed making this video and I hope you enjoyed it as well, of course. I hope it was helpful. If there is anything you know that you might think I forgot, you can leave it in the comments as well. There is so many killers I had to cover up, so there could be one or two things that I actually forgot. I will leave the links in the description about all the important games, such as the crouch stack, the Oni game on how to play against Oni, Odzdava's video on how to counter the booba timing on the locker, and a few other videos as well, such as check spots and videos that can help you out in a chase. If you're playing on PC and you want my reshades, or if you're playing on PC with a controller as well, and you want my settings on controller, all of it is on my Discord. You can find my reshades there, my settings, as well as some guides on check spots that will really help you out. In case you want to join, in case you do have a Discord, feel free, of course. I do stream on Twitch as well, so if you want to follow me there, I would really, really appreciate it. And yeah, like always, mommy knows she loves you, and see you in the next one. Bye!